All right. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for joining me and for helping celebrate Homer's um, Excellent Adventure, my middle grade mythology book that comes out April 7th, 2020. And I'm really excited about this. I like to call it Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And so I'm PJ Hoover, the author of this book that I'm really excited about. And I'm here with some of my friends. And so we're going to um, each introduce ourselves. We'll start with Madeline. Hi, I'm Madeline Smoot. I am the publisher of Seabay Books, which is the publisher of this book. So I was the editor who acquired the book and decided that we needed to publish it. And then I worked on the words and then passed it on to Eric, the illustrator. Eric? Hi, that's, uh, that's me. Um, my name is Eric McKinney. I illustrated the, uh, the cover of the book and the uh, interior illustrations for the different chapters. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, love, uh, I love the Odyssey. It's one of my all-time favorites. And then uh, Bill and Ted's was just kind of a, a staple and a, a huge part of my life back in the 80s while I was growing up. And I am Jessica Lee Anderson. I am also a writer. I'm a longtime friend of PJ Hoover's and I got to be the beta reader. Um, and this is a book that I have been so excited for the entire world to read because I have had the joy of um, reading this story a couple of times and I am just in love with this book. That's one of the fun things about being a critique partner, right? You get to have the joy of reading books many, many, many times. Yeah, Sometimes more times it's than you might want. <laughs> yes, yeah. The same joy of being an editor. That's right. You better like a book if you acquire it. So, yeah. okay. So we're just going to read chapter one and talk a little bit about that. And we have some other fun things planned. So here we go. And I'm going to read and we will start chapter one, which is called upside down in the hands of a giant. Don't make the gods angry. I know this from firsthand experience. Making the gods angry was completely the reason why I was upside down, dangling from the hands of a cyclops with every drop of blood rushing to my brain. Actually, if I had even half a brain, I wouldn't be in this position in the first place. I would be back in Ionia, milking cows with mom. Every 12-year-old boy's dream, I know, but it sure beat my current situation. You're not gonna be able to start the story there, Homer, Dory interrupted. You're skipping all kinds of stuff. I tried to focus on my best friend's words, but my head still uh, reeled from the secret I'd found out about Dory earlier today. I could never tell anyone. Odysseus would have blown a gasket if he'd found out. But that wasn't my issue right now. My issue was the Cyclops. Dory dangled next to me. We were totally hosed. From down on the ground, I heard Odysseus and a few of the not-so-smart guys yelling up at us. The smarter ones kept quiet and hid in the dark recesses of the cave. Where should I start the story? Back at the horse, I asked. Not that I was writing any of this down at the moment. I couldn't reach my scroll or my pen. Not back at the horse. That's not even kind in the beginning. The look Dory gave me made me sure I was about to get smacked upside my head. It is, I said. It's where we met Odysseus. Dory's spiky dark hair shook from side to side, looking a lot like upside down grass growing from the sky, exposing a neck inked with a tattoo I'd never noticed before. Dory covered it quickly with a hand. Before that, back at Ionia. Ionia, I said, that place is so freaking boring. Not that I'd mind a little bit of boring right now. I guess I spoke a little too loudly because the Cyclops, Polyphemus was his name, started shaking me. My teeth rattled around in my mouth and I was pretty sure my brains were turning to jelly. I watched as my scroll and pen fell from my pockets. I guess I wouldn't miss them if Polyphemus decided to eat me. Boring, maybe, Dory said, but it is where the story starts, and you can't start a story in the middle. Why not? I lowered my voice, hoping good old Polly wouldn't decide I was worth, he would decide I wasn't worth any effort and would toss me aside. Maybe he'd nibble on my finger, and he'd think I tasted bad. Duh, Dory said, because you'll confuse people. They won't understand anything about why you're on the adventure, and if they don't understand why you're on the adventure, they won't care why you're on the adventure. They'll stop listening. And that, my friend, is the death of a storyteller. I think I'm already a dead storyteller, I said as Polyphemus lifted me closer to his gaping mouth. It was so gross. There were pieces of flesh trapped between his brown teeth, and I knew they were fresh because he'd just eaten a couple of Odysseus's guys earlier. I don't know their real names, but then one of them we called Spitter, since he used to always spit on his food so no one else would touch it. Just trust me, Homer, Dory said. Start from the beginning. The beginning, the end, what did it matter? My death loomed before me. Fine, I said, from the beginning. 
And that is the end of chapter one. So what we're doing is we're kind of starting the story in the middle of the story, and then we're going to go back and start at the beginning. And so, um, so you know, I'm going to ask you guys a question, which is mythology has such an appeal to kids and people like me. And so uh, what do you think the reason for that is? Are you attracted to mythology? And why do you think kids are so into mythology these days? And Madeline, why don't we start with you? Um, well, I mean, I like mythology just because they are classic stories and they speak to many things that we can relate to, even when they're set in um, a different time. So it's, it's kind of like fairy tales and mythology. They, they have what we need to get through our current life. They just tell it in a more pleasant, appealing story. You know, things like don't trust strangers or, um, you know, maybe don't get the gods irritated with you because then they'll take your 90 day journey and turn it into a 10 year one. Um, you know, it's just little things that, that, that speak to all of us. Jessica. I, okay. Eric, I love the Cyclops that you did so very much. And I think for me, like I love mythology for all the weird creatures. Like I could just picture Cyclops and then your artistic rendering of Cyclops was just so spot on. Cause I it was like the best that. thing ever. Right. Yeah. I loved it. That's loved Cyclops. it so much. Um, oh, well, thank you. and also, you know, I think that the Greek gods, they're, they're messed up, you know, like all of us, like they're, you know, even though there are these, like, you know, these godlike characters, all of that, they're still very relatable because they make mistakes or they've got these crazy past, or, or different things. So I, I just, I find that, you know, these characters very relatable, plus the kick butt female goddesses. I think, you know, they're incredibly powerful and that's very appealing. Yeah. And Eric? Uh, for me, it's kind of a combination as well. I, it was the great imagery that the story is kind of put in, in this fascinating creatures and places and events. Um, and then it, it's, it's the journey, the quest, um, just what the, the heroes and the not so heroic people went through um, throughout the different stories, and you know, I'm a, a long time Dungeons and Dragons players, and the, I think that the reading those stories beforehand is kind of what got me into that whole world of of, of questing and, and and achieving unattainable goals through, you know, all kinds of stories. So very cool, yeah. And I noticed you you said you loved the Odyssey, and you know, I always it was like my favorite mythology story. You know, I think I read it in ninth grade in, you know, back in high school. And I kind of like the main thing I remember at the point was just like Jessica, like you said, like the monsters, like that was what stuck in my mind. Um, but then, you know, as you get older and you start thinking about the story again, and I started talking about it at school visits and you realize like there's this whole, this whole heroic journey, the hero's journey that the characters are going on through it and the things that they're, they're learning throughout. And it's not just like this cool story of monsters. I mean, it is a cool story of monsters, but it's also so much more. And so that's really what I was like hoping to bring to life when I was writing Homer's Excellent Adventure is really showing how, what what's happening to these characters as they are going on this God awful, God, God's awful, um, 10 year long journey. Um, so so I, I had a ton of fun writing it. And, you know, so I know we've talked about Eric's amazing art. And so I just want to bring that up again, because it is really amazing. And so um, Eric, do you want to just talk a little bit about like, you know, once you decide, you, once you accepted the offer to illustrate, you know, kind of like what your process was for that and uh, what other, you know, fun things went into the illustrations. Sure. Um, yeah, I was, I was really excited when she, you know, told me about the, the premise of the, the book. And then, yeah, you know, I just kind of started reading, you know, some of the book and then just um, started doodling and sketching um, different images as they came up as I read, uh, especially for pieces I knew that we would want to do, um, mainly focusing uh, on the cover. Um, and the uh, the Cyclops was definitely the the first one. Um, you know, so as we know, we uh, we meet Polyphemus in chapter one, um, and then yeah, just kind of. Um, narrowing it down to the look that I liked and then um, started playing with, uh, you know, cleaner versions of some of the different poses that uh, he could be in. Uh, and then the last step was kind of determining the colors, um, you know, for each of the characters and then uh, putting it all together. You did a great job. It really pops, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. And I should mention, um, I don't know if everyone can see, there's like this really amazing map that Eric also did to go along with the book. So, and you can find it on my website too. If you want to, you can download your own copy and color it. And Jessica, when you introduced yourself, you mentioned you were a beta reader. And so one fun thing that I enjoyed 
doing in the story was seeking and writing advice. And so one of Homer's first readers in the book is actually named Beta. So it was like a fun yeah. little thing to sneak in. But, um, you know, what was, what was your experience, uh, beta reading and as far as giving feedback and just... You know, I have to say like, occasionally there is a book that you read and you just finish it, you know, and as a fellow writer, like, you know, you just always think, okay, like you, you have all these different thoughts. But when I finished Homer, I was like, this is the book that I wish I could write. I mean, like I, it was just, it was so magical to read and the way to, as a writer in looking at how you wove, we were talking about the Easter eggs and everything earlier, but the, the writing advice that was in there, I was like, yes, yes, you know, and like, I don't want to, you know, jump the shark or anything like that and give away <laughs> tips or, but they're just such great moments um, that are in there. And I was just excited for young readers to, to get their hands on the book too. Like I said, I have been um, at different school visits and like, you know, the kids are like, what's one of your favorite books? And I'm like, it's a story that's not even published yet. And, oh, you know, I was able to kind of you know, share that. But yeah, I have to say like, that was, it was the one book that I wish I could have written. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And Madeline, I have a question for you too, which is what was your decision on acquiring the book? So like, when someone acquires a book for people who don't know, that means the editor is like, yes, I want to publish this. And they make the author an offer to publish the book. So um, well, I've published several of your books in the past, so we already have a working relationship. So I was happy to read anything that you send me. And I'd already just recently acquired The Hidden Code, which is the book that just came out. And you sent me this one too. And I read it and I was like, well, I'm glad I've got The Hidden Code, but I wish I had gotten this one first. <laughs> because this, this was actually one of the most complete, ready to go manuscripts I've ever gotten. I think, like normally during the editorial process, I'll have lots of feedback and I'll have thoughts on, you know, maybe the character's development or the plot arc. Um, with Hidden Code, I had like lots and lots of thoughts. Like I didn't think the pacing was quite right and things like that. With this, I didn't have any of those. Um, so I don't know if you remember PJ, but I had sent you a very long letter <laughs> about the Hidden Code. And this one, I sent you an email, which was basically like, I can acquire it as is. I think we maybe just need copy edits to look for comments. <laughs> uh, That's what so, every author wants to hear, basically. Yes, yeah, so. pretty much. It was like the dream manuscript to get because it required very little work by me. Well, I just had you. to like, read yeah. it. Well, and, and it, it's a story that I've really believed in, you know, and always wanted to write. And so, uh, Eric, I know you mentioned like your love of Bill and Ted's, and that was also like one of my favorite things ever. Is I've recently rewatched Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and I'm like, that's the hook for the story that I need. It's like there's the Odyssey, and then we have this Homer who's going to fail out of school basically unless he can come up with a story. Um, so, I'm actually on that note, I'm going to read a little bit of chapter two, and then I have a mythology quiz for you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, brush up on your knowledge. Okay. Chapter two, from the beginning. So if we remember, Dory told Homer, start your story from the beginning. So here we are, chapter two. Right, so the story, it starts in Ionia, just like Dory said. I sat on my bench in school. Well, it wasn't a real school, just a reclaimed barn that used to belong to the royal family, but then it got repurposed for the good of the people. It still smelled like a barn, and there were smears of pig dung on the wooden walls that I had to scrub every time I got detention. There I was, struggling through another endless day of boring math and spelling and science. I had no idea why any of this stuff mattered for becoming a soldier, but rules were rules, so I had to be here. I tried to keep my eyes open as our teacher, Elder Packus, droned on and on about language arts of all things. No subject was more boring, except maybe history. That was pretty awful, too. He poured through the windows like the gods were testing me to see how much I could stand before falling asleep. Apparently, not very much, because as hard as I tried, my eyes would not stay open. I used my fingertips to, to prop my lids open, but that didn't work. I pinched myself like 50 times. I counted the wrinkles on Elder Pacus' face. Halfway through, I lost count, so I started again. But then I couldn't take it any longer. I finally drifted off. I was having some sort of amazing dream about being the head of the Royal Guard and living in the palace with piles of fresh fruit and meat cooked to perfection. Music played in the background. Someone walked up and offered to rub my feet. Of course, I said, swaying with the music. Of course, what? A voice answered that was way more harsh than seemed right for the dream. Of course, my thoughts slipped away from me. What had I been talking about? Homer, the voice said again. 
I struggled to open my eyes, but in the dream, they wouldn't budge. Mm, I said, crack, my hand exploded in pain. I opened my mouth to scream, but stopped myself as the real world returned around me. Elder Pacas hovered over me. He held an ivory ruler in his right hand, which must have just been what hit my hand. I quick glanced down and showed a bright red welt forming on my hand. Having trouble staying awake, are we? He cackled. Oh, this guy, he had to be the worst teacher in the universe. If he bothered to say anything interesting, maybe I would have listened. But come on, for the last hour, he'd been explaining story arc. I was confused for most of, it, most of it since it took me that long to figure out he wasn't talking about a big boat. I wasn't asleep, I said, shoving a piece of my shaggy hair out of my face. The entire class laughed. You were snoring, Demetrius said. He was a snotty rich kid who made fun of my dreams of being a soldier every chance he got. He was like my polar opposite. Wavy dark hair, super buff, all the girls fawned all over him. Me, my blonde hair always looked like I'd been caught in a hurricane, even though I swear I brushed it. And despite soldier training and working on a farm, I could barely make a muscle. And drooling, Lysandra said, tossing her red hair over her shoulder as she laughed. Yeah, she was Demetrius's girlfriend. And fine, I had a huge crush on her since that first day of school, even though she never said more than two words to me at a time. Also, those two words normally made me want to crawl under a bench, kind of like right now. See me after class, Homer, Elder Pacas said. I knew what staying after school meant. Aside from scrubbing pig dung off the walls, I'd be tracing on the dirt floor over and over again. I will not fall asleep during class. It only made me want to fall asleep that much more. Ooh, Dem Demetrius said, Homer is in trouble. I wanted to punch him. I didn't because it would upset mom if she found out. Also, it could get me kicked out of school, and no education meant no being a soldier, and I wanted to be a soldier like my dad. Of course, mom wouldn't be too upset about this last part. She didn't want me to be a soldier, and she refused to let me mention it since that was how dad had died. Well, she said he was dead. I wasn't willing to give up on him, even though he'd been missing for two years. So that's the first part of chapter two, and so we have this uh, Homer, and basically what's going to happen, spoiler, in chapter two, is that uh, he, we're going to find out that unless he can, like, save his grade and come up with an amazing story, he is going to fail out of school. And so it does have that whole like Bill and Ted's excellent adventure feel to it. So, um, okay, you guys ready for some mythology quiz questions? Yes. Bring them on. And Madeline, you can't answer them all. I probably can't answer them all. That's probably a safe. <laughs> really? I thought you were like the mythology, the mythology gal, no? Okay, here we go. All right, they're pretty easy, some of them. Okay. Question is, which god is king of the gods as well as the sky and thunder and resides on top of Mount Olympus? Do we just jump in? Sure. Okay. Or, or, or do we need no. buzzers? I mean, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> Zeus, you're right. Okay. All right. Um, with whom did Narcissus fall in love? With himself. Yes, with himself. All right. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Um, who flew too close to the sun and fell to his, his death? Hermes? Nope. Mm. Oh, I, I kind of remember that. Icarus. Icarus, that's right. Icarus. Very good. All right, let's see here. We have satyrs are typically associated with which animal? Goat. Oh, so we should mention here that Eric was, is a video game artist. I, I think we forgot to mention that. And he actually worked on one of my favorite video games, which was Wizard 101. And there's like a whole world with, with mythology, right? Yep. Um, which world was it again? I'm trying to remember. It was... Uh... Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of slack for this from the people. <laughs> I should know too. I'm trying to remember. I can picture it in my head so well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll come to me. <laughs> it'll, yeah, it'll come to me too. But yeah, so he he definitely has the whole mythological creatures because like Wizard 101 is just packed with all sorts, sorts of cool monsters and creatures. I highly recommend the game. Um, and I am a level 100 fire wizard for those who are curious. I, I knew you all wanted to know that. Okay, a couple more questions. Oh, um, so in case you don't remember, like the Trojan War is the war that lasted and then Odysseus started his journey. So what is the name of the Trojan prince who initiated the Trojan War by kidnapping Helen of Troy? Paris. Very good, very good. Also played by Orlando Bloom in the movie Troy, if I remember correctly. Uh, which goddess is Apollo's twin sister? I think Madeline's got it. 
Uh, Artemis. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, two more. We're going to see uh, if Jessica and Eric can get these. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who stole fire from the gods of Mount Olympus and gifted it to mankind? Oh, I wrote a short story about this. <laughs> yeah, I like and features very much in um, Curse of Hera, which Eric also did the art for. Come on, Eric, you read the book. Her Hercules. No, it wasn't. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was the Titan that was chained. Oh. Prometheus, <laughs> and he gets chained yeah. to the rock, and he gets his okay. liver like every day. The eagle comes and eats his liver. Yep. Yeah. And it so. regrows, yeah. and it's you know this horrible, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, um, this is a hard one. Who was the designer of the um, King Minos's labyrinth? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> this is actually hard. This is the Madeline. Daedalus. Very good. Okay. This is father. <laughs> um, all right. What is the name of the ship on which Jason traveled to find the Golden Fleece? I love that scene in your book, but I'm drawing a <laughs> So the, the, there was like this, the, the people on the ship were called the Argonauts mm -hmm. and the ship was the Argon? Yeah, Argo. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the weak link in this one. I write no, no. contemporary fiction. So I'm gonna, I know I that's true. Mythology. I'm going to find one to like. I, I tell Greek mythology and other mythology stories to my kid every night for bedtime. So, but they're like my version. And so like, it turns out I got the story of Perseus completely wrong and like had merged four different myths into the Perseus story. I think that's because of Rick Riordan, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I just like, I'm just messed up. I, I you know, kind of completed, I completed Theseus, first like. Perseus and Theseus into one character. Yeah. And, 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 added, and added a little bit of Jason from the Argonauts too. Yeah. Um, so like, but it's a really funny story. It's just, it's not this tale of Perseus. And when we finally read the story of Perseus, both of us were like, oh yeah, you didn't get that right at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll stop our quiz there because I don't, you know, <laughs> I could do this forever personally, but okay. <laughs> Fine. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, the, okay. So do you guys have a, anything you want to say or add uh, but, what, before we kind of sign off for the the session? Easter eggs. We didn't talk about the Easter eggs in the cover. Oh, so that's a really great eggs. thing. Eric put in. Yeah. So, so um, we mentioned Easter eggs, but we didn't, we didn't actually discuss the different pictures. So, uh, yeah. So Eric, do you want to talk about the Easter eggs? I'm sure her. We can go back and forth either way. Um, yeah, so this was PJ's idea to um, sneak in some fun extra pieces into the uh, uh, the different images on the cover for people to kind of try to find and, uh, you know, hopefully discover on their own. Um, probably I, the, even where, I even know where the Easter eggs are, and I can't, I still can't find them. Like, I'm looking <laughs> at the cover right now, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I know they're supposed to be a little pig. But I, uh, no. <laughs> That's probably the hardest one to find. I know, I'm going to find uh, my that was really hard to find. see it. Yeah, that one is actually engraved into the leather strap on um, the Cyclops' um, uh, the harness there that goes over his chest. I know. Uh, it's way I down know. towards the bottom. <laughs> okay. I wonder if it got lost in the, in the color. It's hard. Yeah, because it is hard to see. Oh, well, I can, I can like, maybe, maybe make it up. But, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was that was a tricky one. Probably the the most visible one is probably the uh, the cat perched up on the Trojan horse. Uh, Let's see if I can walk fast forward. The cat, yeah, the cat yeah. Is you. yeah, that one's uh, that one's tricky. It's uh, really cute. The, the um, uh, then there's the uh, the shadow on the uh, the farm. Yeah. Do you find that one? Yeah, <laughs> that's the uh, the shadow of the uh, telephone booth from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Um, on the shield of the uh, the ship, um, uh, you'll have uh, uh, some uh, ancient Greek uh, writing on there, um, which was uh, very kindly uh, translated by a, a friend of mine's mother who was born in Greece, and she is fluent in modern and ancient Greece, which was very helpful. Uh, <laughs> and then um, uh, the... Uh, uh, the wax seal uh, on the scroll um, is uh, has a little uh, 
a uh, band logo on there that um, some people might recognize. And then uh, the, the last thing, which isn't really a, an Easter egg for most people, that was actually an Easter egg for my son. Uh, on the farm, there is a goat. <laughs> That is my son's uh, goat, and her name is Nina. Oh, uh, so. yeah, I remember that one. That's awesome. Yep. That's <laughs> she's awesome. A, she's an Oberhasli, and uh, he got her as a birthday present from oh, Grandma. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and you, you forgot one, which Jessica mentioned earlier, which was a shark in the water jumping the oh, shark. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yep, you're so, right. Yeah, they're really fun, and I think they're going to be a, fun, a lot of fun to talk about when I do school visits. Um, I'm definitely going to be pointing those out and mentioning them, because I love that they're on there, and I appreciate your, all your hard work doing that. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's really great doing kind of secret stuff like that and just seeing, you know, who happens to, to notice them in passing, and then, yeah, also to give people hints and see how well they do kind of searching yeah. the cover. That's a good idea, actually. I could do a little quiz on that. Yeah, very cool. Very fun. Anyone else have anything? I have something. Um, maybe a lot of other people might not know this, but as your friend, I know one of the names of your dogs. Do you want to share what? <laughs> oh my god, I, oh. I can grab him. Hang on. I think that would be fun. Come here. Oh yeah, because I love the story so much, and and so I got this little dog. Oh, look how cute he is. <laughs> so and his name is Homer. So this is Homer. <laughs> He has an excellent adventure planned, which is <laughs> taking a nap for the rest of the day. Um, but yeah, so I have two dogs. Yeah. The other one is Xena, like as in Xena Warrior Princess. But yeah, um, that's my little baby Homer. Yeah, good idea, <laughs> Jessica. Oh, that's so funny. So he's, he, he, they helped me write the book, I think. Yeah, I think I had them when I wrote the book. I don't remember. So, but <laughs> so yeah. They, they, they helped help me the, the publishing process because yeah. it takes a while. Yeah, so. And then just a real quick question from uh -huh. the time you started the book to the time, you know, it's going to be coming out. Um, how, how long was that journey? So I'm trying to think when I started the book, that's a really good question. I can actually look it up if you give me two little seconds, because I keep a copy of every file that I've ever done when I'm writing. So I started the book actually in April of 2016. So four months, I mean, four years, years. Four years, yeah. four eons. I don't know. That's what it feels. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I started it. Um, I forget. Yeah. I was. Just, I think it was like right after that rewatch of Bill and Ted. So I was like, that. I, this is. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to write. Yep. So. Because it actually published pretty fast. I think. I think yeah. from contract to publication was only about eighteen months. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so generally, sometimes that can go up to three years. Sometimes it can take three years from contract to actual publication date. Yeah. And that's so. cool that you started it in April and then it's going to get published. I know. I never knew that. That's, that's, that's actually all. Let's, let me check the specific day that I started. What if it's the I started on the 5th of April, so not the 7th. Oh, not the 7th of April. So yeah. almost exactly four years. Yeah. Wow. That I'll have to like, what I'll have to do is maybe I'll post it on my website or something is go back and look at my very first revision of uh, uh like what the chapter actually looked like and how different it was so i always like to do that and compare them um sure, the nice to be able to compete see so I'll, I'll check and maybe put that on my website so very cool well thank you guys anyone have anything else i want to add I got two more things. <laughs> uh, first thing is the world in Wizard 101 is Aquila. Aquila. <laughs> so, was it Aquila? Aquila. Aquila? Oh, see, I've been pronouncing it wrong for about 10 years. <laughs> Uh, and then the second thing that I just wanted to mention too is you showed the map earlier um, and my son has really uh, enjoyed um, following along on the map as we've been reading the book oh, and trying good. to find the different locations as we go through each chapter. Yeah, I love, I love how you did the map. It just, you know, we were working at you were back and forth, back and forth, and then you sent us this copy and Madeline and I are both like, OMG, this is like the best thing ever. So <laughs> I couldn't yeah. be, I could not be more excited about a map, this map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yay, thank well, you. Glad you're very happy with it. it, was, yeah. it was, so, was, very cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Thanks for helping me celebrate Homer's excellent adventure and being a part of my journey on this book. I really appreciate all of you. So. No, and thank, uh, thank you for letting me publish it. I was very excited to acquire it. So. And thanks for letting me be part of the adventure too. This has been so much fun. Yeah, this was a this was a dream uh, dream job to be able to illustrate these types of images and you know work on such a fun book. So thank you very much and uh, congratulations. Wish you all the best. Thank you.
Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Bye. Bye.